What's up, fake book? This is Corey Thompson here. Got laid off from the oil field seven years ago. Been doing real estate ever since. If you're a blue-collar male, or in Spoon's case, we better throw in the females, and you're looking for a way to get into real estate investing, hit us up on roughnecktorealestate.com. If you're tired of just exchanging your time for money and want to come out here and, uh, and learn how to make your money work for you, jump on there. Send us an email. What's up, Rob Trigg? What's up, buddy? What's up? Rob Trigg from Jet Lending. Thank you for having, having me on your podcast today, man. Dude. I appreciate it. Uh, amazing. Yeah, kid rides. This live stream is brought to you by GBD, GBT Property Management. Thank you, God. <laughs> the good old that's that's so yeah, that's, uh, that's God uh, Lord speaking to us what do you think Braxton we got Rob here Rob you were doing your intro and then we did our intro I know what you think of that tractor footage I love it I don't know I love y'all's intro I still don't know where that intro. tractor footage footage came from when Paul was out there I don't I don't remember Paul being around the tractor he's been here twice the first day I just I guess I don't really remember what y'all did we have a drone fall on you at all times. That's part of the package. I believe that. <laughs> I, I I see that track foot, footage every time, and I'm like, I have no idea when we shot that. So what's up, Rob? Not much, man. You know, just lending money. Anybody want some? You want some, don't you? Dude, I always want money. Yeah. Hey, uh, rumor on the streets is hard money lenders are backing off. They're backing down. Well, it depends on who you talk to, but I'd say that there are some nationwide lenders. Yes, they are backing off. Backing down, can't even find a lender right now for multifamily. Really? On a yeah, for your nationwide lenders, it's very very hard for on asset based lending lenders to find somebody that does long term multifamily. What do you think about that? That scares me. He he was just about to uh, submit his little twelve units to Velocity. Uh huh. They gave me a uh, like a conditional approval or something. They're like. Looked at my credit and everything and, or whatever and said, all right, like, obviously they're going to have a conditions list. All Is that. it on fire? Nope. Well, the velocity would close on it if it was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Velocity is a good, good lender. But, mm -hmm. yeah, they, they'll, they'll close on anything. But they uh, they, they liked it, though. Yeah, they have, they have certain conditions that uh, a lot of, I guess you'd say, your spoiled investors don't like. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, you're getting the deal done and uh, you've, you've, you've got to take that into consideration <clears throat> with the market that we're in right now. I mean, if you can get the deal done, what do you care what the interest rate is right now? As long as you're, yeah. you know, it's positive cash flow. Hey, Rob, tell well, me this. What is interest? What is interest? Yeah. What is interest? This is, a, this is a trick question, by the way. There's no uh, right answer. There's no right answer. Okay. Interest is what you pay on a loan so that the lending institution makes a spread off the money. This is true. Spoony, what's interest? It's the fee you're paying to borrow somebody else's money. Cost of money. Cost of money. Interest is a motherfucking tax deduction, son. Oh, Why are you well, worried about it anyways? Yeah, there you go. I, I swear these fucking realtors and <clears throat> loan officers, they, I mean, that ain't tax advice. I'm not a CPA, but, but you know, whenever people give me the whole interest, when I'm like, bro, interest, at least on your balance sheet, I might be wrong. Spoon's going to know more about this probably than I would. But this is something we learned this year, and you can pass this right on to your people. When, when you take your balance sheet and you have all of your deductions, mm -hmm. okay, so you have a single property, you, you put X number of dollars into it, um, the money you spent on it, everything that went into that project, mm -hmm. okay? When it's on your balance sheet and you send that property to a bank or a large lender, like a, like a local bank, they look at the balance sheet for the property or company for any, you know, balance sheet for property or company, okay? They take your interest and your depreciation. And what they do to it for it, Braxton? They add it back in. They add it back in. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you have deductions 
that you that you got to deduct, you know, whatever, you know, a stove, a sink, you know, a bunch of different things that you put into the property. You don't get credit for that back. But you get all your credit for your interest and your and your uh, your depreciation credited back to your income. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So interest in and of itself is not a problem or shouldn't be a problem. And, and higher interest shouldn't be a problem. Um, if you're a, if, even if you live in your own house, if you like the house that you live in, do you get to deduct your interest off your taxes? Of course I do. Of course and, I do. and no other W2 person out there, you know what I mean? That's not a real estate investor. Like the higher interest rates, you get to write all that off. Like, yeah. And, and what you're saying is absolutely true, but I mean, then you have the average consumer that's been used to 2.75, 3.25, 4. Look guys, I, I tell I'll tell people this every single day. We're in a normalized interest rate right now. Maybe. I mean, it, it, it just depends on if you look at the total history of since mortgage lending has started. I mean, heck, in the eighties, you you'd be lucky to get twelves. This is true. All of this is true. I agree with you a hundred percent. The problem is the education from the from the, and I'm talking about more residential mortgage mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. Um, the the realtors. You know how when something happens in the news, the, the the talking points come out, and all of a sudden they have the talking points, and it just gets, as Spoon would say, um, what is it, gaslit into the... Mm-hmm. Gaslighting. Gaslighting. It just gets gaslit into the atmosphere over and over again. The talking points on higher interest should be this, should be this. What is, what do you get to write off on that rent house? How much of that rent do you get to write off on that rent house and your average W2 person that doesn't office in that house or doesn't do anything in that house. I, I don't know what portion of that they do get to write off. You know what I mean? I'm not a CPA, but I'm going to guess it's closer to, I mean, how much of your rent do you get to write off? Well, I mean, when you factor in everything, pretty much all of it, like they get to cancel out essentially. No, I'm talking about your rent that you pay right now that you pay to that apartment. Oh, complex. Zero. Yeah. You don't get to, you don't get to write any of that off. None if, of it. But if you owned a house, Right now, personal mm-hmm. residence. Right now, what would you get to write off? Whatever percent I can say. No, the mortgage, mortgage interest. interest. The mortgage interest. Oh, no, the mortgage. It's all of the interest on it. Yes. Even on a personal residence. Mm-hmm. Even on a personal residence. That's what I'm saying. The talking point should be: it's a moot point. Bill it to mm-hmm. Joe Biden. Well, you say. I mean, it, you're saying the wrong. The wrong message is jumping into that echo chamber, and they're just recirculating the wrong message. The, what? the message should be. That you can write off this interest. Yeah, like if I got a loan to sell, if I'm if I'm trying to sell a residential piece of real estate, or I'm trying to sell a hard money loan, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? The, if I'm trying to sell a hard money loan, it gets easier because now it's an interest only expense, right? Mm-hmm. So you get to write all that back, and the next lender that's going to refinance you out of this property is going to give you credit for that expense back on the income the property produces. So if I have a, a loan from Rob at Jet Lending, and I'm and I have a tenant in place. I get to write a hundred percent of that monthly payment off on my taxes. Saying, I'm, a, I'm a CPA. I'm not a CPA. This isn't tax advice. But I get to write it off. And, and, and let's just go ahead and tell them we're not lawyers either. We're not lawyers. We're not lawyers. <laughs> we but don't give it, law advice. When, when I go for a loan, when I go for a loan with the bank, they're going to give me that deduction back. On Absolutely. My income. Yeah. They even ask you well, at the end of the year. What what do you have a loan on? Uh, you can write off your interest on your car. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Now we're getting off into that. It's not CPA nonsense. I'm okay. Not, no, I'm not. I, I'm just telling. I'm I telling. I don't know what the rules are. I'm, I'm, I'm telling. <laughs> Scare me. Huh? The average real estate investor. If I've got a loan to sell, if you understand how this accounting works, you have to understand the opportunity cost of not doing the deal is far more expensive than the interest you get to write off. Exactly. Exactly. Period. Period. End of story. That's the end of the conversation. Yes. So if you're on the fence about doing a real estate deal right now, Braxton, do you think we're in a buying opportunity right now? I'm sorry. Yes, and I do think it'll get better. He's not excited about that. Why, why so. are you not excited about I'm way, the I'm way more stoked than I should be. Yeah, you should be, like, jumping up and down out there making 
four hundred phone calls he's, right now. I don't. Like, I don't care what the market's doing though. Why? I'm, I'm consistent. Yeah, he, I'd rather he, just be there through every cycle, not worry about it. Well, Dollar well, cost averaging. We understand. We understand. Spoonie, are you excited? I'm so stoked. Yeah. You, you see every like, investor. I was in. I was in the Southwest in 2008 and 2009. That's where I was living and watched yeah. it all collapse and saw people buying. Like. It's gonna be good opportunity. I, won't say I don't it. think it's. I don't think. I won't say it. Won't. You gotta Go say, say it. it. Nah. You gotta say it. Was that when you're in El Paso? No, it's Cruces. Oh. <laughs> oh. What, uh, what? What year? Uh, 2000. So I got there in 2006. I thought you were in uh, El Paso in that year. Yeah. Worked there every day. Every oh, okay. So you were in El Paso in 2006. I mean, you keep trying to play that game, but <laughs> I worked at both places. I worked at Bliss and White Sands at the same time. Yep, had oh, offices oh. both places. Okay. Okay. You were in the army. No. Oh. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. We look. This part of Spoon's past is whenever he he told us he's he's the motherfucker of I did not El Paso say that. real estate. I asked him what street a property was on one time, and it's turned into this. He's like, oh, I, <laughs> I, I just said what streets it on. They're like, like you know every street. I'm just like, I'm just asking the street. I used to live there. And we're like, I thought it was Cruces. He's like, well, I, I lived. I said it was this probably the same place. Well, so they're very said, much okay, the same place. So did you have a house right on the border of the city limits or what? Yeah. Like he on did, New Mexico. He doesn't understand logistics that they're only 30 minutes Anyways, apart. Anyways, he's been very vague and the answers have changed every single time we've asked him about it. Like every time. last time I asked him about 2006, I, he was I literally said, in Paso working in Las Cruces. I literally but, said, you can just go to the deed records and check. And he's like, I'm not going to do that. All I know is be fearful when others are greedy. Greedy when others are fearful. So that's where, you know. What do you know about silencing your phone during a podcast? Uh, I, I I thought it was like an unspoken rule. Mm. You know? Mm. I don't follow the rules. I'm a rule breaker. <laughs> What's up, people? I don't know if you're watching. <laughs> Drop us some comments in the comment section. <laughs> Andrew's send this, here. Send this out Who? to your friends. <laughs> Andrew Hosell, another mortgage lender. Yep. You need to come to this studio and shoot content with us, Andrew. Mm. So, Rob Trigg. Yes. The market. Inventory's low in Houston. Um, no, it's actually not. What what I what we had talked about earlier is that inventory has risen, okay. but the number of listings has gone down okay. as far as um, w- the data we're seeing. And why is that? Because people don't want to move. They're in a two and a half to three and a quarter um, interest rate, and they're like, "I'm not going anywhere. I'm keep that right here." But another interesting fact: why? Let's just say, for instance, you did want to move. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't I move? Yeah, why wouldn't you? Um, I think there's people that always have to move, but yeah, if I wanted but, to move. Yeah. Um, don't, I don't, uh, we just talked about it. Don't let interest rates scare you. Go buy the house that you want. I would go vitamin E shopping. Yeah. I need some of that equity. I need yeah. some vitamin E in my life. So knowing that I'm in a buyer's market, I'm gut shooting everybody. Yeah. I'm got shooting every. I'm going on MLS. And Shoot just, them in the knees. I'm just fifty percent, fifty percent, fifty percent. The first person that says maybe, I'll go look at their house. Yeah. Then I'll decide if I want to live there. Shoot them in the knees right now. That's yeah. what I tell them. Yeah. Like, well, 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 everybody's like, "What do you mean?" Every everybody I talk to, I was like, "You're paying too much." I was like, well, "You're not in that market anymore." Well, it's tough to get a deal. Well, I'm closing deals. It it's not tough. tough to get a deal. It's tough to hustle. It's tough to work. It's tough to get out there and get it done. That's what's tough to do. Mm-hmm. It's the actually will to go do that. That's what's tough. Yeah. I mean, most people don't have that drive. Like, oh, uh, uh, I'm just, I've got a loser mentality today. I'm, I'm, I woke up and the wrong side of the bed and life's not treating me good. And you know what? I hate to quote Rocky, but. Who's Rocky? Rocky Balboa. But uh, he's, that quote that he told his son, life is going to punch at you. And if you don't punch back, you're going you're, you're gonna to end up at the bottom. You better punch back. Every single body that's watching this, you've got to get out there and hustle. Spoon, you look sad right now. Have I'm you just seen, listening. Have you ever seen the Rocky movies? Have you? Yeah. All uh, of them? Yeah. Wait, how many are there? I think five. I think. Wait, do you count Creed, too? I, I would no. say there's a separate. I think when you brought violence no. into the conversation, it scared Spoon. Oh, I'm yeah. so scared of it. He thought mm. it, you, you mentioned. Like, mm. But, I mean, uh, but everybody has these a uh, thousand excuses, and I, I, that's what I do on my own Facebook. I try to motivate people um, to, to see their potential in any given day. Like, you only have today. Tomorrow's not promised. I know that's a, that's a 
bullshit line or whatever. Everybody says it, but it's the truth. But it's real life, yeah. It's, it's real life. You've got to make the most out of today. You've got to give it all you got, 110, 120%, and, don't leave. and when you go to bed at night, say, okay, I gave it all I had that day. And in today's market, that means making a 30% offer. Yes. Or giving it your all today. Braxton, whenever you're on negotiating right now, um, how have negotiations been? Are people coming back to reality? Um, yes and no. I, I haven't seen enough to really say, yeah, there's been a everyone's understanding. But I definitely educate them very quick. Like, it's the same script every single time. Like, hey, you know, this is Joe Biden's America. Interest rates keep going up. They're already sky high. You know, the cost to get people the job site, materials, everything so expensive. You know, I'm just trying to park a little money. I've just got to rent it for enough to cover my debt, and I just can't do it at that price. Yeah. That's well, right. Heck, Fox News announced that they're fixing to shut down. Did y'all see that yesterday? We don't they're watch Fox. To... You don't watch Fox? No. Okay, we're, seeing it was it? we're seeing in, fellas. Okay, it was. <laughs> he's, he's telling you that because he doesn't want you to know it's the MSNBC <laughs> only in his house well, all the time. They announced something yesterday. I, I caught, I was in passing, caught wind of it, that they're shutting down, like, oil production. Braxton, help me out here. Did something you see this? Diesel or something? Yeah. No, no we've um, only got we got twenty five days of diesel. Okay, that's in the I did yeah, see that's, something. Yes, that. yes, yes, that. That's that's. I don't think that's. I think it's probably factual if you frame it in the right set of circumstances, but that doesn't mean we're not refining diesel. We're not it's, doing everything it's, else. But it's they, all, they said they said they were they were shutting down refining it. No, false. Okay, okay, okay. Look, look. Okay. This is this is this is election season. You can take everything you see from here on out. Just know that it's just something <clears throat> okay. to get you to show up and okay. punch for Beto. That's why I'm ready in Kanye. I'm punching for Beto just so he can get rid of all the the terrible guns out there. We, Lucky we, for me, I lost all my. Spoon. Look, we never had we never had a doubt about you and who you were going to vote for. I appreciate that. We, I voted first day. He did. Got my. Sticker. He voted Ann Richards. It was a weird move. <laughs> it was a weird move. He wrote she's, it in. She's a nice lady. She's, she's a corpse. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, but I mean, you got Ann Richards in that arm. <laughs> Ann Richards was a great governor. You talk all the shit you want to. She was. If that's the part I got, I'll take it. Yeah. Jesus Christ. She was a great governor. I don't know about that. But um, what we got going on is a, is an interesting real estate market. I I, I am uh, – how many listings we got out right now that we got Waco, uh, two in Granbury. One of them just hit the market on the lake. Is that a, is that a nice house, Spoon? I loved it. Damn, bro, I'm getting blowed up. It's 24-7, man. My phone never How, how excited was I in my little live I did in there? What did you say? I watched it. I mean, I'll, I'll give him a 6.15. But that's super excited for me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> it depends. Like, you get talking about El Paso, Las Cruces, you're at an 8 easy. I do love it. Yeah, I do you, love it area. I think you were <laughs> nervous walking over the porch because you started whistling. I don't know if it was Dixie. We won't. We won't. I was put, not. It was like an 80s yeah, song. Yeah, don't put that evil on. I you don't know. want to put that evil on you. But you're let you know, people speculate now that you. They can go listen to it. Was an 80s song. If I if I heard it again, I could play it. But we were listening to 80s music on the way over, me and the kids. I sure hope so, because you know, it made me feel a little uncomfortable. That I was whistling. Possibly Dixie. It was definitely not. I don't know. But <laughs> we'll let the internet decide. It's in Roughneck Real Estate, the group. If you want to go in there and Miranda around. Yeah, traumatize yourself yeah. or whatever. But it, I mean, <laughs> if you want to be offended, go, go to Roughneck go, to Real yeah, Estate. Yeah, go to Roughneck <laughs> to Real Estate. That's a true statement. The, the only place where real estate gets offended. <laughs> so, And real estate is an inanimate object, so how does it get offended? But it does. It does. That's what's so impressive about it. But we've had how many showings on that house? Oh, I don't know that answer. It's. It, I mean, according to the stats we have in teams, it's zero. Or Agent Eight's putting any showings in there. It's had nobody call about it. For, I mean, October real estate, that's probably pretty normal. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, October Lake real estate, probably, again, pretty normal. Um, but that's a really, really nice house. Not a lot of inventory in that neighborhood. Probably pretty sought after. I would, I would man. That, well, it's the reason why we bought it. I mean, it's like, look, you're not going to get this. You're not going to get this real estate at this price point. If it sells, it sells. But I really hope somebody pays us $2,500 a month to live there. Me too. Um, what are you doing tomorrow, Braxton? Be real busy. Doing what? Market research. What kind of market research? Checking out uh, the other lakefront properties there, kind of seeing what we're up against. Yeah. Uh, 
seeing the property, laying eyes on it, taking it all in. How though? On a jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> We're written jet skis yeah. 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 with Spoon's credit card. Yeah. To do market um, research. I yep. appreciate y'all letting me know. They never ask. It's personal so thank card. You. Well, at least uh, yeah. at least they're letting you know yeah. ahead of time. Yeah. 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 What's what, your Instagram? My Instagram, uh, oh Lord, you had to ask. I think it's real estate veteran. Hold on, let me let me no, let me verify. Wait, y'all I'm, need to find Rob on the TikTok. I would have guessed the baddest motherfucker alive at Instagram. Real estate veteran. The baddest? No, no, no. I'm very humble. Real estate veteran. Yeah. Real estate veteran. Yeah. Real estate veteran. Yeah, you're the real estate veteran. I'm the well, real estate veteran. And. No, no, not the. No, there's no the in the middle. No, well, it depends on where where you're at to find me. Where 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 are you the real estate? I think TikTok. I'm the real estate veteran. There you go. Go find him. Yeah, I'm. The, I have the king of Texas real estate on Instagram. The just, king. Yeah. Slay king. You, you're gonna have to get you some chops. Well, I'm just gonna and dye it. your hair I'll black. Just sell it. Yeah. Protect this king it. forever. The you're king. Do it. How are you gonna sell it? Just sells the know. account. And gives them the password. Yeah. Get that Y'all make name. this sound easy. I yeah, bet you can't have it sold it. by next week. I'll give you 50 bucks for it. Deal. Done. <laughs> <laughs> you just lost money. <laughs> I'll Venmo you right that now. That quick. <laughs> uh, hold on. I bet, you, can, I bet you can't have it sold by next week. I'll give you 50 bucks right now for it. Deal. <laughs> Deal. You are being a little rude <laughs> you, right you now. You taught me. You taught me. <laughs> Take the first offer that makes money. Don't hold out for a better deal. Time value uh, money. Yeah. When I didn't do that, he made fun of me for an hour with everybody in the room. <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, it's twenty five hundred dollars. It was true. I was no, way no, too drunk to make it. It was five thousand to twenty five. Five thousand. It was twenty five hundred. I learned my never done. get drunk and, uh, and and negotiate that. Yeah, somebody offered him five grand for a website. Donnie Ruffin offered mm-hmm. him five grand for a website. Then he didn't take it. I had to force him to take it. It got weird. I was like, Don. Yeah. Take this website. You paid me for it. Somebody had WWW. Oh, he bought it. He paid for it and didn't. didn't. Yeah. He's got it now. When I first started in real estate, somebody had www.robtrig.com uh, because his name was spelled T-R-Y-G-G. And he wanted anybody that put T-R-I-G-G to go directly. So he, he had both of them bought. Yeah. I had to pay him $300 to get it. That's released. cheap. That's cheap. Uh, I know. but I'm a domain squatter. I love yeah. to squat. So I get it. Braxton oh. Harrison on Instagram wants $500 for it. Uh, really? Yeah. I slid in. I was like, "How much?" It's like five hundred. There's another Braxton Harrison. Yeah. Oh lord. And he's got it on Instagram. I I made him a cash offer, hundred dollars. He want to take it. Take he the five. You should pay him the five hundred. Yeah. You know, that you may be a billionaire one day. I've got real Braxton Harrison though. Oh, the just the real. real Donald Trump. Yeah, like real like, Braxton Harrison. Yeah. Donnie slid in. You're with just the you're just a on wannabe, his, which is just brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Braxton uh-huh. Harrison, if you're watching this, you you're just a wannabe. <laughs> this is the real Braxton real Harrison. Real Braxton Harrison. I don't think you're on a podcast, buddy. Exactly. Yeah. What if he had a huge podcast? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, followers. <laughs> y'all yeah. being mean to this rando on, on Instagram? I, had, I, I don't yeah. even know Rob, but now I'm scared of him. We're bullying just, him right Don't now. yell at Braxton. You know, the six people <laughs> that are going to watch this are going to run over to this Braxton Harrison's Instagram. Who has 12 viewers on his podcast. What, <laughs> if, his, what if his name's not even Braxton Harrison? That would be... I'd, I'd feel betrayed. Yeah. Like, you're going to... What's the word? Like, besearch? Is that the right... What? Besmirch? besmirch? Yeah, besmirch the besmirch. name. Besmirch. And not even have that be your real name. He just knew that you were going to come along one day. Yeah, he's like someone. His name's like he, John. He, speaking about real estate saying, we got way off topic here. <laughs> but you know, what you remember a, what Spoon? How he defined that one word? Which word? The, the Q word. Ooh yeah. Yeah. You remember? I didn't why define did that, it. No, why, it oh, I just said they used to have different meanings. I wanted I no. Said. I wanted to go back to that. I never got to. And maybe I did, but I think you're thinking of the southern. Word I'm, queer Q U A R E. I'm definitely not. No, no, no. I, I'm not talking about that word. I'm not talking about that word. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm talking about queef. Oh, oh queef. That's funny. <laughs> oh, my bad. Let's get that story. We did have that discussion where Jason was like, oh, growing up, people would use that Q word to just mean strange. Yeah. A lot well, of no. people think that, but. No, no, that 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 was no. no it was it, strange. Yeah, no, that that definitely that I, I I used to hear old people say that all. Well, oh, it's, y'all forget we're from the generation of actually opening the dictionary. Yeah, and my, going and looking up the bad words. My grandparents that raised me were like depression people. They were old, old. It's yeah. not like 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 they they use that word 
to mean weird odd. or yeah, odd. odd. Yeah, that, that's how it was defined in the dictionary. When I first opened the dictionary, because those words you were not allowed to say, and that was on the list, you couldn't look up the F word in the dictionary. It's not couldn't, in there. No, it wasn't. It is the time. now. It is now, but it wasn't then. So, you, so you would look up all the bad words that uh, you could find. Yeah, shit was in there. Ass. Um, ass was in there. It was donkey. Oddly I enough, had that talk with my kids the other day. They're yeah. like, "You can't say that." I'm like, "It's a donkey. It's fine." Uh, the Q word was in there. The G word was in there. What do you? What are your thoughts on cussing in front of your kids? I do like it all rip, the time. Yep, yeah, me too. I don't, no, I, I I don't care. I tell my kids like, "Don't do it in front of your grandparents, your mama." Yeah. I know you're gonna do it around your friends in your school. Like that's what they're kids gonna do. do it. Cool. They're gonna do just it eventually. Have some respect. Yeah, and what? just teach them respect of, of their elders, and right. d- and just don't do it in front of th- these certain people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't. Other I tell my parents? daughter if, if if she's caught saying a bad word, the devil himself will show up and greet her. What? Yeah, I don't believe that. I don't I, believe it either. I do. I'm like, look, until you're 18, these words make evil spirits yeah, in your life. Uh, and I scare her so with the Bible. Of, some some of the stuff that, that comes either. out of his mouth. I, I, do you have a Bible in your house? Unbelievable. I do. Do you, what, well, it's what all, version? A lot of it's King totally James. made up. On is the it really? Spot. I, I, yeah, but he is just, a, I like the version where he, he is the best improviser I've ever King met version. in a conversation oh. ever. Just talking about the fact that like 99 percent of the things you say are made up on the spot. Like oh. when <laughs> when when you look up gaslighting in the dictionary, it's just a picture of Corey. Your, your lips showing again. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> well, anyways, real estate is, uh, you, you said uh, earlier, well, we won't talk like we did something earlier because that's going to come after this, <laughs> but um, payoffs. Payoffs. As a lender, they're slowing down. They're slowing down. Yeah, they are, which tells you one or two things. You're not able to sell your property or you're not able to refi. Ah, this is something I wanted to talk about earlier. Okay. Guys, this is what we're seeing. And I, I did a, a like a ten minute stream yard about this. If you do not have the cash to do a flip, or a, let's not talk about flips, let's talk about buy and holds. Let's say you don't have the cash to do it, and you're like, "Oh, I'm going to put this all on my credit card, all my credit lines." Mm-hmm. You're setting yourself up for failure. I agree. Why? Well, in my opinion, um, it's not going to cash flow enough to pay off that credit card. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's. Subjective it goes you know, deeper than that. Well, but it, you're there, not going to be able to refi. Yeah, at you're, all. Not gonna, you're not going to be able. Well, yeah, de- debt to income. Not debt to end income. It's just going to lower your credit score to where you, you don't qualify. If you're 700 when you start the the the, oh, that's the buy and hold process, and you put every let's say you put thirty forty thousand dollars of debt in, on credit cards. I it, the de- by the it, time you get done with that rehab, your credit score is going to be below six twenty. You got to know how, but 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 like, there are people out there that I know that are very good at that game. Oh, I, I'm sure, but I'm talking about no, your average investor. I know, but they're they're here's here's he's not talking about not using them. He's talking about having it never show, having it never show up. Very good at the game. Mm. It's well, it's we it's, need to we need to educate the public. All right, I I, I tell them it's probably illegal, no. probably probably a crime. But if you know what day your credit card reports, so let's say every month your credit card reports the balance on the fifteenth, but it's the balance that was there on the fourteenth. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you pay off that balance on the fourteenth, okay, so you have say three credit lines, you just move that balance before the reporting day. To another credit line. To another credit line. See, that's smart. And and, they, and 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 the credit score will stay up because it looks like you're carrying little to no balance. And actually, you got to leave a little bit of a balance. They won't see a little bit of a balance. Around thirty percent. Yeah. So 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 they just move it. And they, and I and I know people that have play, played this shell game for for years. Granted, I will give you, there are probably smart people out there that know how to do this. I'm talking well, about your average, everyday person that doesn't uh, know yes. what the effects of credit yes, will do credit, to credit them. line. And, and then again, it also depends on the amount of the credit line. You know, at one point in time, we had three or $400,000 in credit lines. So $100,000 on a, on, a, on a credit line for us didn't ne- negatively affect our credit. We could have 100000 out. Now, if they all of a sudden said, hey, look, the economy's getting bad. Your $400,000 credit line is now a $200,000 credit line, and you got 100 on it, you're in a bond. Yeah. You know, so 
at you, what you brought up is very, very good that most people aren't thinking about. You are correct. The average investor does not. They don't think does think, think that far think ahead. That, think that far ahead. But um, I know people that have played that game for a long time and beat it. Um, but, and, but you've got to be educated on that's how a to lot beat of work. it. Yeah. You, well, and 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 really and truly, like if you have a revenue problem right now, you don't need to take, stack a rental into the mix. Yeah. We go through this every Monday meeting. I mean, we pulled up our our rental um, portfolio the other day. We we look at our bank accounts and and now this is before rents hit, but you look at it and it's like, oh, this doesn't have a large enough cash reserve right now as it sits. This company, this particular company that's holding rentals, don't have a large enough cash reserve to to maintain. Now, in everyone's defense, that's why we have the meetings. So we're sitting there and we got a refi that's going through that's going to pay eight thousand. The bank gave us back eight thousand at closing, so we had five thousand in the bank. Eight thousand is going to that. Mm-hmm. It's going to be thirteen thousand. Rents have not hit yet this month, but mortgage payments have already been paid. Does that make sense? Yes. So everything there is going to, you know, it, 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 the, the account is going to blossom back up. Okay. But we had $17,000 in the escrow account on another refi. So this property got refied from the flipping company to the holding company. It had a seventeen thousand dollar cash balance in its escrow account mm-hmm. in the in the flipping company, mm-hmm. and that seventeen thousand's got to come over to the other company with that property. Now it's property capitalized. But if you just ignore that, and by ignore it, I mean, you know, you own rentals and and you get below a certain threshold of money. You know what I mean? You, you can't maintain those properties. You, you like if you're owning if you own thirty doors in an entity that's only got five grand to its name no you're in trouble you're you're in a you're in a bad way you need to get that up to 30 40 fifty thousand dollars you know what i mean and the way that that works for us is those rentals they just pay into that account and at the end of the year after the the property taxes are paid after everything's paid if there's a hundred and fifty thousand dollars in that account then you say okay a hundred thousand dollars is getting paid out to the owners and you're going to maintain the 50. Yep. But if at the end of the year, after you pay property taxes and everything, <laughs> it's only got $20,000 in that account, well, guess what? The owner's got to put some money in. We're going to have to put some money in. And and that's – and if because any other shorter duration of time isn't a long enough sample, um, especially last year. Last year, air conditioners, we spent $170,000 company-wide on ACs. Ooh. 170 grand on ACs. Uh, if I can make our rentals make $1,000 – Per door per year, that's damn good money. Yeah, um, it's like you got to maintain all those. Last year was a crap year for air conditioners. Every air conditioner that was on the brink brink went over the edge. Now you got a ten year run with the new one with a warranty, but it, I mean it's still painful to have to eat that deferred maintenance. It is right now. Um, so yeah, Spoony, what do you think about that? Trick question. When he's not, he don't want to answer. Who's watching other than Andrew? Is anybody else watching? Do we have seven people watching or 22? We need to know who's out there. Y'all drop yeah, a comment in the comment six. section. Six. Send There's it, more than this, six. Send this to your favorite group message. I found out just now, Spoonie, he was there. I have an above average yeah, y'all sus- share this. subscription of women on this channel than, really? than YouTube as a whole. Yeah. Yeah, it. 15%. It's amazing. I mean, could those just be his baby mamas? Whoa. Probably. Or, <laughs> or they think Braxton is handsome. Braxton, that could be it. Braxton, that could you, be it. It could be it. This is real estate state Good of the chance. union, but it's mixed in with a little bit of different generations. Do you think that uh, if a woman walked in here right now and said, hey, let's go to lunch, do you think you'd be able to talk afterwards? Like after the lunch, if or? she just came and no, asked no, you out, yeah, like, like if she, talk at lunch. Yeah, if she just came in here and was like, "Hey, let's go eat." Do you think uh, 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 I can uh, do it? Would you sound like Britain trying to call a tenant? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I mean, not in that situation right now. It's sales. Yeah. That's all it is. Like that's what I got to remind myself. I've that's got all. Thousands it is. of reps on the phone. Yeah, so that's what I got to. You got to get go thousands of reps. And I mean, <clears throat> it's not. Uh, hey, I don't. Look. It's I like want to t- believe, it, yes. It, real estate, life, it doesn't matter what it is. Right now, you're sitting here, you got to know. Until you, uh, I mean, a no, like it is an N-O. Until you start opening your mouth and talking, 
you're not going to get a yes. Unless it's already a yes walking through the door, and then Braxton can't even – he's speechless. He's like uh, – Okay. Well, well, hold the pull. Go, like, go back. Go back. Too good to be to, true. I have to start. Like I, yeah. I've got a couple steps to get through. Got to overcome your objections. I, no, no, no. There's no steps. <laughs> it's already to lunch. Oh, there's got, sales process. Hey, you know what? My, <laughs> hey, my perfect response. I know the perfect place. Let's go. Wait, do you know the perfect place? Bone Daddy says only if they place oh, that they're close to here. Mm. Yeah, but it, do, hey, it do. doesn't mm. matter what place it is. Right, You've got uh, the perfect place. Let's go. Spoon, mm-hmm. help him out. Right now, where do we go? I got the perfect place. Okay. Okay. Where? Guess where? Tell me where. <laughs> Tell there me where you, you think. Yeah, where, t- where, where do you think we're going? Because I, I, I'm hoping this is we got this much in common. Where's the perfect place? Whataburger. That's it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> like, hey, they could say. Hey, uh, they could say Crystal Burgers. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Let's go. Oh my God, we got so much in common. Yeah, we we got to get so out of much here. in common. That's Let's good. go. That's good. It doesn't matter. I did that to Emory with the. Is uh, that where you were the, going with that? The birthday gift. I don't think anybody caught what happened though. Y'all are gonna have to break it down for them. But yeah, I think I, I know. I think the audience thinks it's all the married guys know that for sure. Yeah. Hey, where'd you think we're going? Where, hey, where, hey, hey I, I'm taking you to dinner tonight. Where do you want to go? That does not work. No. Yeah, hey, guess where we're going? Exactly. First thing out of their mouth, punching it, it in the GPS. We're gone. <laughs> Dude, you, I can't after believe a while, it. you have to change it up though. Like, no, you have no. to give them like two guesses. No, because <laughs> you're like, no, you're just gonna say whatever. Listen, last night, last night, my wife said, "Which neighborhood do you want to go to?" To trick or treat, trick or treat, yeah. And I'm like, all right, let's just go to this one over here, the new Dr. Horton one. She's like, all right, or we could go down here on Colonial. I'm like, I guess you're we're absolutely going to right. Let's go to Colonial. Sounds good. Yeah, I went to the rich white people neighborhood. Oh, that's one. How do you go for you? Did you oh, get a well, good haul? Yeah, no, it was a, it was a good haul. Um, and then I was like, man, we're, they're sleeping on the trailer parks. You know what I mean? Like, really and truly, like, trick-or-treaters be sleeping on the trailer parks and knowing that the, the Hoopty liquor store is in the trailer park. So in Grosbeck, we don't have liquor stores, but the guy that, that sells everybody liquor is in the trailer park. So I was like, if we go in there and surprise the trailer park right now with, by trick-or-treating, they're not going to be prepared. They have a porch light on, but it's really the Hoopty Liquor Store. So what, we might get a bottle of Fireball for our kids. What, what is Bone Daddy? It's this a, is a barbecue, barbecue restaurant. Place. Okay, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's real good. That's okay. the only restaurant I've been to around in this area. Ryan's mm-hmm. over it, but I enjoyed it last week, Corey. Ryan's Why is over he over it? it? I think uh, bad I mashed know. potatoes. That'll do it. He, he didn't even have to buy last time. I bought. So the, did uh, you buy or did thing. my credit card buy? <laughs> No, it was Jacobs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jacobs grab trash, trash food. So the, 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 the credit card me and Jacob share. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was the American Express. Oh, I got you. Jacobs personal card. Don't leave yeah. home without it. You are <laughs> just trying to take. Yeah, I'd never leave home without Jacobs credit card. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> either. How co- I, I, this is a question. Uh, out of all these, how come y'all can't j- get Jacob to come up here and do a podcast? Jacob would come up here and do a podcast. He just, we would have to, it would have to be a drinking game. The reason why is because Jacob's really good at talking when he's drunk, but doesn't talk a lot when he's sober. Yeah. I like Jacob. Jacob's fun as fuck. Yeah, he is. I like him. But in this environment, he couldn't talk it up with us? He could, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he would, he would. We could play a drinking game. It would come off. It, Jacob would come off. You know what? We need to do it. We need to do a Friday night podcast up here one Friday night, and, and just, just and just bring him, and we'll 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 get, we'll get some bourbon. There's a Hilton right there. We can all get just <laughs> get hammered. Right. <laughs> Corey, Jacob, tell them right? your drinking game idea. Yeah, I had. A, I had. A, I think we should cold call. I think we should turn cold calling into a drinking game. I think we should come up here and cold call real estate. <laughs> And then put words and phrases and stuff and like no nos and slip no, ups. No, 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 no. Put a shot on it. So if you say it or actually do you, it, are you looking this. to sell your house right meow? <laughs> <laughs> or play those kind well, of well, games? Yeah, we have done that. You like, have done that. Yes. Yes. Words, it's like you got to say a word. Yeah. What, what word did you give me, I, Jackson? <laughs> uh, We're live. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> I, I don't remember. I don't remember. All, all I remember. I was, was not like, there, and I cannot oh, confirm. Well, yeah. well, let me. I don't really remember. All I know is that. All I do remember is that I was like, oh, my God, he actually said that. <laughs> and she didn't hang up. I'm like. I mean, you can't get away with one of... thing pretty much 
at least yeah. once because they they got to reconcile if it's really crazy in their brain that you actually well, said so it. the second when she like to clarify he didn't say it a second time but he said something along the same lines afterwards i was like are, are, she's just that type like she took it she's like i'm in there mm. yeah I, I mean i knew I, no one but here's the deal he had already talked to this lady so we had intel on her so i mm. knew when he gave me the word i was like what was the word it was a your favorite slow. word oh it was it was your favorite word yeah was it nice it well no but i mean it was funny because i he, he's had me call a 90 year old lady because in his mind a 90 year old lady is going to be shocked by a word that word a homosexual slur word but in my mind i was like heck i mean I she think... probably says it every fifth word you know what I mean? Like, I was like, uh, so. Was that God yeah. laughing? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny whenever you hear, like, not from the speaker, but so he'll laugh. I, back. I was like, I was like, this is, her generation just tosses this around like Halloween candy. So when I got on the phone with her, you know, I, I told her I was looking to buy her house at such and such address. And she was like, why? And I was like, these bleeps are taking over. And she's like, yeah, same thing's <laughs> happening here, sweetheart. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> well, I don't want to play that game on camera. Like we, uh, well, what if we, Jason? What if you've we, already shown that a little bit of alcohol and you have no self control anymore. I, I wouldn't say that stuff. I, I, well, I will say some crazy shit. Like, you, have you ever seen Super Troopers? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you know, chicken what, burger. <laughs> would you say that though? <laughs> yeah. Would you? You would on the phone? Yeah. What? Look, if you could call a seller, a seller a pedophile and still close the deal, you would be the ultimate closer. Think you can pull it off? I don't know. I don't know where y'all come up with this that's stuff. That's pretty hard, man. Yeah, like, that... I, look, I know you're a pedo, but let's get this deal done. <laughs> like, what, what are you? Uh... What did? No, nah, I mean your neighbor said I would move out from that guy. He's a real piece of shit. He told me this about you. <laughs> you think you, you get it closed? I don't know. That'd be a hard one. I wouldn't try it. Yeah. Uh, do you? Do you? I mean, if if Braxton gave me the word pedophile on a call, it would be real easy. Is that word banned by YouTube? Are we allowed to say that word? Um, it's not the best. It really is. A Do bad we word? get deranked? I don't, I don't know. P word. P oh. word. All right. Okay. We're trying to stay monetized, but what? No, oh, so if I, I said the F word, it demonetized us. No, F word don't. Mm. No, what unless, the which, which F word? Of a chick. But but that word, if I was given to it on a on a cold call, I would just say, "Hey, I see. There's a lot that live in this neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it pulled up here on the map. I've got one of these apps. The <laughs> yeah, like finders. Did, did you know? know? Yeah, did you know there's 37 people that are registered in your neighborhood on this weird database? Yeah. Anyways, how much would you take? Yeah, what's what's the cash price of that? You know? Rob don't want to be part of this conversation. I don't. Not Rob, at all. Rob's like, Sorry. Well, let's going. change the subject to yeah. something Rob's comfortable with. Rob, loans. We, we we can talk about loans. We can talk about having fun. But when, when, uh, when will hard money interest rates go up, you think? I think they're probably at their max right now. I mean, it depends on Fed, you know. You think I'm talking about hard hard money loans right now? Jet's still loaning. Uh, what's the lowest interest rate? Interest only Probably loan. Twelve percent right now. Yeah. When 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 does that become fifteen? It's, oh, it can't. You got in usury. Well, but he's saying, but usury's pegged to the. Uh, yeah. It, you can't it's go pegged over eighteen point right? nine. Really? That's that's points and origination, within a certain period of time. Really? I think it's within a year, uh, right? You can't exceed eighteen percent within a year. I could be wrong. Um, I'm not. I don't. That. I don't know the usury laws either. But I thought the same thing. I thought they were pegged on on uh, on on prime. No, it's usury uh, set at eighteen. Hmm. So you cannot go over eighteen percent with it. Now that might change if you know if mm -hmm. the Fed rates <laughs> keeps going up and then yeah. Banks so eighteen percent, but you could theoretically, if you're originating two. You could go to sixteen, but it makes no sense to go uh, to do that. I mean, your spread. You, you want you want to get the origination up front. That way, you know, you, something you, happens. Something Cost happens. basis is lower. Yeah, you you, you don't you, you, the the more origination you get up front, the less less points you charge as far as interest. I mean, it, it's a it's a better offset. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would I would say that. Uh, I, I think hard money rates. I mean, I I think certain lenders, um, certain competitors. I mean, are you already seeing them fall off? You already see them. Well, I, I mean, you're the people that know what they're doing. Like we talked, like like me and you have said before. If, if you pivot well in this market, which any good business is going to do, 
Um, you know, the days of lending full 70%, those, those days are going to come to a, I guess, a lesser of, of happenings on a regular basis. You know, you're going to have to back off your, ARV. your, your ARV and that way the lender's got a little bit more leverage on the property. Um, and you have less leverage. Um, I think those days are, are here for, for the time being, uh, I think underwriting, um, the right way and making sure that, you know, your clients have proper liquidity to get through a, a, a transaction. That's, that's one way you, you, you help. What about pivot. credit? Um, you know, as far as fix and flips, you know, credit is a, is a, um, it's not really a huge wow factor. Um, I'm going to say that if you've got bad credit and you've got plenty of cash, why not do a flip? You know, why well, not do a flip? Maybe, maybe the flips are not flipping. You know well, what I mean? Well, uh, like, but then sometimes the, the titties creative. don't be tittying. Yeah, but then you got to get creative. We don't have a push up bra for flips. Well, yes, they do. What is it? They sell to an end buyer that wants to keep it as a rental. Uh, and who's you? You going out there? You you gonna snatch up, um, fully remodeled flips and why run not? them out? Only if it's a fifty cents on the bu- dollar. But wh- but I why? need to buy one right now. But why not? But why not buy something that's fully remodeled? I would buy it if it was fifty cents on the dollar. That's what that's you got to create equity or buy it. That's the only way you can get it. Yeah, I mean, and and that's and maybe fifty cents on the dollar is their all in cost on that. But I mean, if you're trying to flip in this market, you got to you got to know that it, it could end up becoming a rental. Yeah. And so, so uh, I see where you're going with the conversation. Yes, you got to pay attention to credit in this market. You got to make sure that the the person that you're entering, uh, that's entering that loan with you, does have a solid exit strategy. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't just underwrite to anybody because it's becoming more of a transitional, you know, uh, buy and hold, um, you know, market. I, I, data wise and owner financing. Well, hey, you could do that. You definitely do owner financing. This is true. Owner financing is fisting to skyrocket. It's it's coming back. It's making it's it, it oh, it made a comeback in our business. Yeah. Believe me. Yeah, it's, it's out there. It's coming back big time. How to uh, but when Jet this is this is the problem. When Jet wants their money paid off when you owner financing, you know you know what I mean? Like you gotta have that but if you got that large cash reserve, I guess that is where it yeah, comes that's, in. That's you, where you got to have a large cash reserves. To say, okay, hey, look, I can what's pay your this loan off? What's your what, what's your exit strategy? So, we, I mean, uh, we've we've pivoted, I'd say, the appropriately um, to make sure that cash reserves is like the biggest thing. Like when clients don't have cash reserves, we don't even look at it now. We're just like, hey, sorry, you need to go find some cash. Yeah, you need or you need to find a partner to partner with that does have that. And then this is why businesses fail ninety percent of the time. Why is that, Spoonie? Because they don't have the cash to run their business. Fuck a cash. What is it? I don't. I don't know. I was just saying they're not properly capitalized. No, they're not selling enough volume products at a high enough price at a large enough volume to keep their head above water. They don't have any revenue. Okay, you have all the cash in the world. If you don't have any revenue, your expenses are going to overtake your cash. You got to be able to drive revenue. So these guys that that have no cash. They don't have any revenue. Lifestyle might be eating it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. They might have. They might. They might have went out and balled a little too hard. You know what I mean? Those days are over. I so mean, you got to be able to drive revenue. Um, we're driving revenue with down payments on owner finance. Spoonie last week I had to walk out of this nice podcast to go close one. What'd you get on that, Spoonie? Uh, twelve thousand. Yeah, you got no, twelve grand. No, on no, that? that was four. We had a couple last. Forty-four hundred dollars yep. last week. Forty-four hundred dollars on a week. What does that cover? Well, it uh, covers a tenth of our operating expense for the month. It's funny. Mm. Wait, mm, mm, what? Mm. <laughs> what, do you, what answer do you want? You, operating so, expenses are not, not, not debt service. Debt service is not operating expense. So it covers a fifth of our debt service for the month. Yeah. He just, he just mm. said that's not what it was about. Yeah. Didn't answer the question. Like, well, we, there's no wrong answer except for all your answers. <laughs> So also I've you're answering three, everything the wrong way. I've learned three things from Corey Thompson. Don't answer. One, just don't answer questions. <laughs> Two, if you talk about formula, he hey, gets oddly erratic matters. and just none starts screaming. Matters. Formula? Yeah, yeah. You're form, missing baby the point. formula. He just like I did it with these two hands. 
dinosaur bones and dragons. What? And then, yeah, don't talk about... Uh, hold on. And we number, can get on that subject. And number three, and the actual most important part, the only part that matters... And this is what matters for the people that are borrowing money from you. I'm one of them. If you get a deal at a deep enough discount, it's still a deal. If you're buying at 30% on the dollar, all in. People don't understand that, though, right now. That's what kills me. Like your average, like your investors are like, oh, you can't find deals. Says who? Says who? You know what? Stop staying in this one little area where everything's already been bought up. Go find your deals outside of the city limits, maybe. Spoon used to say there was no deals he, i did look i was scared to buy stuff and, wow. I, and i'll give him all the credit for this because i i didn't i was over analyzing i was stuck in my own bullshit just trying to do stuff and Corey thompson well, i was afraid to make deals afraid to make offers on these deals and one day Corey's like look dude if you just he was so fucking sad and exacerbated oh, mm. he's like look if you're not gonna you make this offer at least make just throw a number out that you know you can sell it for because I was like, oh, what happens if I can't close? This was before we were doing business together, like we were partners. And I, it, it finally sunk into my head that if I can, I know it's a $100,000 house, but if I make a $25,000 offer, there's somebody that'll buy that for 26000 Do you know why Spoon and I are in business? It's a real talk. No. I, no. When he ran out of money, he came back. Mm. That really is it. He's the only one that ever did that. Everybody else just ran out of money and went broke. <laughs> Spoon came back. So Spoon hit a ten thousand dollar lick, and before that, we talked every day, and and he got paid ten grand. He That's not true. He we did not talk every day. He, he look, we talked a lot. We 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 we, we I, I had my little office. I was jamming it up. We were on the phone, doing our own things. Two competitors out there competing in the savage world against each other, competition wise, and uh, I don't, we no Fighting we we ran the, the market. We ran we ran the marketing. Uh, I ran the marketing. And, I, and, and Spoon was like, I'll do anything. And I'm like, just go through these fucking voicemails. And I, ne- I, I made a Snapchat. I was new on Snapchat. I was getting titty pics and talking real estate on Snapchat. And uh, anyways, I was brand new. That's, on, that's a first. I've never heard of, of, of the anybody sending new that, that combo on, on Snapchat. It's, it's a, I think it, that's all they used it for. 2016, my Snapchat was lit. Today... Not so much, but anyway. So I was I He's I made a corner. Snapchat. I made a Snapchat because I was going through. I dropped this big voicemail drop three times. Messed it up. Two, <laughs> messed it up two times. Uh, don't. Anyways, had to go through and listen to the ones that called back. And uh, and this lady was on the phone. And and I have um, this unique ability. Man, I wish we'd to, the house. to hear the white trash in somebody's voice. Oh, man. You know what I mean? Oh and, yeah, it's always there. Well, no, 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 no. You can, like, no, no, you can tell. No, nah, he can. He can listen to voicemails and be like, "She wants to sell for thirty-seven dollars right now." Like, it's really weird. Like, it, it, it is. Like, it I is, can. I can it's just like a I, six cents. I can just hear in a voicemail the right. Like, I'm like, oh, that's the a writing deal. on the wall. Oh, that, I knew her at the marina. Deal. That's a deal, deal. Like, that's a deal, deal. You need to call that one back. And so I'm, I'm, I'm making this snap and made the Snapchat. Listen to the voicemail, and Snapchat gives you the ability to save it. And I sent that Snapchat to Spoon. I was like, you call this lady back. That's a good one. That one's going to be a good one. And I'd only listen, I think it was like the one voicemail that I listened to. Probably. It's about, is that about average? Listen to like one. We got, there it is. Y'all just had. Was y'all this, been, this was the banana shirt house, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I told Spoon, I was like, I was like, hey, call this lady and get us. And this was back whenever we were running appointments. We'd go look at it before we'd make our offer. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, here, set an appointment for us to go look at this house. And he sets us uh, an appointment. I'm like, I'll go with you. I'll help you get it locked up. Now, remember, we ran the marketing. Uh, I had Spoon listening to voicemails, but he didn't have that. You know, he just couldn't. It, it's still to this day, Braxton ain't as good at it. I'm, I, I can hear the fucking, I can hear the pain on the phone or something. It's just something about. I want to reference Rob, I just call him anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't have that luxury to sit back like. Oh, I guess I'll call that one or point at that one and yell at somebody. I'll just, I just get in there, man. We just yeah. call them. I just do the work. Just yeah, do it. Just, just do the work. Like I said, get up and do the work. So, yep. so we go. To, we run this appointment. We run this appointment, and you can go find this back on the on the YouTube <laughs> channel. You can go find this appointment being ran on the YouTube channel. Um, and I just had my group set up, and so I had my phone, and I went to Marshalls or somewhere and bought a shirt that wouldn't fit. Because the only size it was a it was a banana shirt, and it had a literally pocket. covered in bananas. Yeah, it had a pocket on the front. Okay, mm-hmm. and I stuck my phone on live, 
in the pocket to where the camera was pointing out. And so I'm on Facebook Live walking around this house negotiating this deal. And uh, we get to the back and Spoon's back there. I need there. to get him a, uh, a chest plate one. No, no, it, then it'll be obvious I'm videoing. Oh. See, I'm doing this in secret. Oh, okay. Because they, they don't know, you know what I mean? So we're negotiating this deal. And and so I'm, I'm laying them on my spill, and, and this is, I did pass this on to Braxton. I mean, this very negotiation. I'm like, look, we did one right over here. You know, I'm with you. The price is right, but my partner's not going to like this price because we lost money on this other deal over here. The absolute most I could give you is $40,000. Mm. And they stood there. And the next person to talk in this deal loses. loses. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it. I mean, you just know that. So we're just all staring at each other. And they said, well, quite honestly, you know, she only wanted 30. He's talking about their mom. And I said, well, I'd rather pay 30. And the husband of the daughter goes, well, hell, he's been nice to us. Let's just meet him in the middle at 35. I literally snaked that dude's hand as quick as I could. I was like, deal, click. <laughs> just- click, click. <laughs> And and that, so this that house, was my only part of the negotiation. I'm like, deal, click. Th- this house to be rent ready during that market would have still probably took twenty or twenty five to get rent ready. I got it was it was a hoarder house, like four foot of yeah, shit in it. But 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 it's the only house I've ever been in where rats had lived in the tub so long, their pee had ate the bottom out of a metal tub. And the faucets just sheared off of the wall. They chewed them off. They chewed the faucets off. But the pee of their nest rotted a hole in the tub. They'd flipped a big old, like, 100-gallon uh, aquarium upside down in the mm-hmm. tub, and the rats had just packed it full of paper and made this it, it big-ass nest. It was nuts. So this house was this house was pretty bad off, mm-hmm. okay? And you can watch the video. You can go find it on YouTube. You, the, the whole 17-minute video is there of me walking through this house. It's not very good lighting, obviously. How, um, how would I f- find it? Give me some words. I want to watch this. Well, it, the, the little negotiation part is going to be the first short on this YouTube. Um, I think it I says cut banana it down. shirt. That's what he's asking. How would people find the video? How, how would you search the video? Maybe it's banana like shirt? Seller, I mean, seller negotiation you were there? live? No, I've seen the It's video going to be though. in the seller negotiation live playlist. It's going to be in there. It's going to be probably the very first one. So um, that particular property, needing a, 20, a legit 25. We had locked up for thirty five. So, to Braxton, you can add what's that? Twenty five and thirty five. Yeah, uh, it's like sixty. Yeah, so all in sixty. Okay. Mm-hmm. What What's the ARV on this house got to be for that deal to work? For that deal to work? Yeah. Hundred. Hundred. But what does it got to rent for? Eight hundred. No, it, it, we typically end up right up to where it's got to rent for twelve hundred. And it che- you said what does it have to rent for? I'm, I'm yeah, well, in today's interest market, it'll be closer. It's going to be closer to the twelve hundred yeah. anyways in today's interest market. But irrelevant. Th- this deal right here, this this particular deal that we're talking about, barely checked that hundred thousand dollar mark. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, it was like maybe one ten ARV. Mm-hmm. Okay, but it would have rented. It would have rented phenomenally. Great part of town. I mean, great part. It would have went. In ten minutes as a rental, but we could we didn't have that renters that that landlord mindset, so we're only thinking of it as a flip. So Spoon had done all the work on the deal, obviously in this story, uh, you know, and we were told Spoon we'd help him out. So he contracts it, and we assign it to our buddy Shane. He buys it on a um, buys it on private money, and then immediately refinances onto mm-hmm. a bank note. So basically a bird method, but we didn't want to own rentals. We didn't have that renters rental mindset. We thought rentals were going to be a bunch of maintenance and all this nonsense. So he owner financed it. What's that property worth today, Spoon? Two twenty. Two hundred? No way. You don't think so? I think it's three hundred. What? I think it's in the twos. I, I I bet you we can pull comps on it and 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 it'll be closer to three than it'll be closer I'll pull to. Pull it two. up on Zillow. It's a it's a it's a three two brick with a two car garage. In the heart of Granbury, Texas, what's that worth? I'd say, yeah, three hundred. It's closer to three hundred. Mid but to high two hundred. We bought it for thirty-five. And we bought it for thirty-five. We 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 we. That's a home spoon made right ten there. grand. That's a grand it. slam. Well, because it's brick. Base is loaded. Yeah. yeah, I'd say mid to high two hundreds. Yeah, easy, all day. So so Spoonie made ten grand on that deal. Shane owner finances it as is. Doesn't doesn't even take the fucking rotted piss tub out. Like yeah, clean, no, we we cleaned it out. We cleaned it out. 
but as I mean, is, he owner financed it, I think, for one twenty one thirty. Okay. There were still raccoon turds on the floor. And they remodeled it and lived there today. That family remodeled it and lived there today. So they're sitting on 150000 in equity, definitely 150000 in the pre- previous summer. I would guess that that it, it, it will never go below two twenty ever, ever. All the ones on that street are in the two, 240 to 280s. Um, what, have on sold? Zillow. I'm just looking on Zillow. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. So, but that, that, that property, I mean, it's an amazing area, irreplaceable um, asset. And had we had today's mentality, what would have happened, Braxton? Kept it. We'd have kept it, and we'd have pulled probably 60 out of it, and it would be currently rented for around two grand a month instead of— And still uh, be under-leveraged. And still be way under-leveraged. And we'd have realized a big gain out of it, a big tax-free gain. But instead, we Spoon made 10 grand— and, Got me through two months this, of my life. I was is, broke, bro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You came back two weeks later. You started talking to me again. We were friends again after two weeks. You were like, I'm just ready to go from, back to work. Just got back from Disney World. You know, you know the first thing I bought? Shoes. Two pounds of bacon. Wow. We hadn't had, like, meat in forever, so I went and bought some bacon and came home and booked a pound of it. You you bought bacon first? Yeah, that's, that's what I went home and bought. So when you make money, your first instinct is heart disease. How fast could I get it? Taking <laughs> bacon's bacon. Bacon. good so food, literally. I think y'all should cut that out. The pig lobby, the pig industry out there, yeah. he's associating all pigs with heart I, industry. Well, heart why, heart. why are you associating bacon with uh, cardiac problems? See, Greasy red meat. This is why we're so, bad at podcasts. I'm not saying but, I, okay, I would okay, okay, okay. We have a couple minutes left. Um, <laughs> y'all have any, Rob, you have any uh, thoughts on Andrew's questions here? Andrew. I can't even read them. I need my real. Oh. So can your large cash reserves be HELOCs also, or do those funds need to be parked in a depository state? No, you can have a HELOC. Yeah, you could definitely have a, a home equity line of credit as long as you could show that, you know, w- what that total content of that HELOC is, um, how much has been drawn from, or if it's, you know, a full HELOC. Yes, you, you can use that as, as part. Uh, again, that, that would get you into some trouble, though. Yeah. Okay. Got another one. The exit strategies for the folks taking hard money loans, refinances, what kind of loan, um, private sales, et cetera. So are they are they selling it? Or are they refinancing with private capital? Are they refinancing with bank debt? I mean, what's their what's their main exit strategy right now? The people that you're lending to right now, if you're buy and hold. A lot of people are are leaning towards the DSCR loans, the, the, the non QM loans, because I mean your debt to income ratio. It doesn't matter. You you could write every single dime off, and end up getting a hundred thousand dollars back off your taxes. I'm exaggerating a little bit, yeah. but uh, DSCR loans—they're low doc, non-stated income loans. Yeah. So. What's what's the interest rate on those right now? Uh, sevens. They're still in the sevens. Yeah, sevens, high sevens, Damn. right? Yeah. 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 Well, unless it's velocity. <laughs> yeah, they're they're higher eights, low nines. Yeah. Or okay. Elevens. <laughs> All right. I mean, but at the end of the day, again, if you're buying it deep enough and you got enough equity in it, what does it matter what your interest rate is? All right. Yeah. Andrew wants to know what Jet's great at and what is in uh, relationships. All right. And what is not known for good at? Oh. Uh, Intentionally is not known for or good at. Yeah. I think we're we're good at we're great at building relationships. I think that is where Eddie, when he first started this, as far as doing the super investor meeting mm-hmm. and having that networking event, I think that was one of the biggest things that he has wanted to keep true in the company as far as building those relationships with your clients, having a place to network. And, you know, and we still do it just in a different form as far as how we teach our clients, how we meet with our clients, how we talk to our clients, and how we interact with them um you know another eddie um gant fact eddie's got what got in this business 1997 i believe no, no, no. I, I think yes yes got in the business yeah 1997 1997 um so eddie has been involved in over 5000 transactions yes as of a year and a half ago two years ago yeah had been as involved far as in flips over five lending as far as flips and lending but how does he evaluate every lending deal? Personally. Like he's going to own yeah. it. Yeah. Like, 
I don't like that's if he doesn't like something he says I don't want this back in our inventory. He, yeah. what, he said that to one of ours. Yeah, yeah, a lot of ours. <laughs> he under he underwrites <laughs> it like, hey, what what if I what if jet lending or has to, I, own this. Has to own this? So, so you're talking about somebody that's um, because we were talking about evaluating 15 deals a day, but but there's a lot of deals that you evaluate. I mean, hell, we just got one all the way to the closing table, and the guy's payoff he's going to have to bring eighty one thousand dollars to close, and we're like. How the hell did that get this far into it? And I mean, well, the, the clients lie to you. They'll tell you anything to get a deal closed. I mean, this last month, I was uh, same thing, uh, refinancing a house that he did with a, a competitor. The competitor's calling the note. Um, I will tell you, this is this this is a little plug for jet lending. The, this is what we're not known for that we're good at. We have yet. And it was, Eddie talks about this all the time. I talk about it all the time. We have yet to call a note, and le- if the note is uh, still out there, it's gone over the term. We have yet to call the note as long as you've made your payment. Oh, I know. We we looked at the, we we looked at those. That is something that we are known for. That we will now. Do we want you in a loan for two, three years? No, no. That that's killing you. But we, as long as you're you're making your payment, we are not. An asset uh, uh, acquisition lender. Yeah, they don't. They don't. You don't loan money to take back assets. Yeah, we, we don't want. We don't want the asset. We want you to be successful. We want you to yes. get through your rehab. Uh, we want you to either refinance it or sell it for a profit. We'll work with you. That's that's uh, Spoon? that's probably what we're best known for. Did you just get your first contract over in uh, Clifton yet? Mm-hmm. No, no, I was gonna check with Jacob after this. Okay, but he's. He, we just did a loan. He's gonna have to ask for a partial release on. Mm-hmm. Those those are always fun, but I mean you're he's doing a land deal, mm-hmm. so he's breaking it up into smaller pieces and selling it off one at a time. So it's going to be a partial release, and uh, Old Spoonie's going to have to go to Jet to to get those. I doubt he could get that with another hard money lender, because they're not going to understand. Yeah, we what. do land. Well, but but the partial release. Yeah. So yeah. so where where, I mean we've done it. We've done it with Jet where we've bought two three, four property portfolio and sold them off one at yeah. a time and you got to go for a partial release. Most lenders, they, it, I mean, pay off my They're whole loan. Like, oh, well, yeah. Hold on. What's a partial release? Yeah. You got to pay off they the whole loan. Well, so. y'all also looked at, y'all looked at this from uh, you know, what's this going to be? We had an appraisal in hand for what it's going to be after we split it up and y'all took all that into account too. I think yeah. there's a lot of lenders that wouldn't do that. No, not at all. So anyways, we got to wrap it up. Rob, who are you? Where can they find you? I'm Rob Trigg, Director of Loan Operations with Jet Lending. You can find me on YouTube. You can find me uh, on Facebook, um, Real Estate Veteran on Instagram. Um, you can find me on the Jet Lending website anytime, any day. Or you can call me, 903-806-4400. Damn. Can I, can I text you pics to that, too? You, you, yes, you can, and only you. <laughs> mm. If you... uh. If you need to get that loan from these guys, make sure that you mention you saw it on this on this podcast, so he can get Braxton to do all the work on that loan. Yeah. Ooh, well, that's rude. You just stole Rob's business. He's not trying to asshole. steal it. No, it's so. all going through. That's his loan officer. Okay. Well, guys, we appreciate it. Um, Andrew, thanks for always watching. Thanks for sharing it to your friends. Thanks for liking, subscribing, pounding the bell. Braxton, you're handsome as fuck. We gotta go. <laughs>